So now you're getting into this whole federated storage mm -hmm. area. Um, talk about what you mean by federated storage, sure. and then we'll talk yeah. about what's different about what you guys are doing. Yeah, so here's here's kind of the, the background. We've come a long way in highly virtualized storage platforms. There's, um, you know, the benefits that one can realize on a highly virtualized storage platform from, um, uh, you know, tiering and um, uh, ease management, et cetera. Very clear, right? But what uh, our customers still uh, struggle with is in this new data center um, where you have, um, you know, you're deploying large-scale virtualization, you're deploying your cl cloud-based architectures, you uh, run into a couple of different situations. One is that data center is very unpredictable in its workloads, right? You've got a lot of diverse and changing workloads. And so part of uh, what we hear from our customers is, you know, I, I sometimes find I've got a workload, you know, trapped on a set of resources, and, and I'd really like to get it to, you know, a set of available resources elsewhere in my data center, maybe even in another data center, but I can't take the downtime to do that. Um, the, other, the other thing that we find is when it comes time to take advantage of uh, storage uh, technology refresh, uh, lifecycle asset management for storage, um, again, in a uh, cloud data center, a virtual data center, we've got many, many applications consolidated. That the ability to, to, um, uh, you know, take your multiple applications down, your multiple tenants down, and and do that refresh, very painful, very difficult uh, exercise. Um, and then the the final thing, and it kind of builds on the point you guys were talking about with thin provisioning. We have loads of thin provisioning customers, and they what they uh, see as an opportunity is, you know, they've gotten you know thin and high uh, utilization results from thin provisioning. They actually see an opportunity whereby they can kind of share uh, free capacity resources across their data center with you know technologies that go beyond in the box virtualization. And and that's squarely where we're aiming Storage Federation. Okay, so it's a, a, a collection of independent arrays that you're actually managing as one. You call that, I think, peer-to-peer. -peer -peer -peer. Right. Right. Yeah, so so uh, I, would, I would describe Storage Federation as the following. It is um, uh, distributed volume management across, you know, peer-based storage systems, a, a federation, um, really, uh, uh, interacting in kind of native in-band communications between them. They, they're relying on no external devices to actually, you know, do any of the, you know, functionality we're talking about versus virtualization. Think of virtualization as sort of a hierarchical technology, a, 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 a SAN-based virtualization appliance uh, virtualizing arrays beneath it or uh, within a storage array a storage controller virtualizing disks beneath it. Uh, what we're talking about is a, is a peer-based technology and, and what the advantage that brings you is you don't have, you know, an additional layer of equipment, additional management point, an additional failure point uh, in your architecture. Keep it simple, keep it more efficient, et cetera. Okay, and, and the, you talk a little bit about the use cases and the problems that it's, mm -hmm. that it's solving. It's not heterogeneous. Right. We're right. Not, we're not talking about an appliance that goes in and manages other storage, right? That's right. Um, so, what problem does it solve? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and and well, I mean, I think uh, Sean's got it got a great uh, take on this. But at the end of the day, what we're what we're aiming at is solving the problems in of of unpredictability in your cloud based architectures and really tackling that. Uh, for our customers in, in a better way than anyone's ever been able to do before. 